tonight, the biggest household fuel bill price hike in a decade. Campaigners say the move will leave thousands with the choice, heat or eat. We've got a lot that we could probably spend that on, to be fair, that's disgusting really. Like, I don't know how they get away with it. Also tonight, COVID claims. As the pandemic loosens its grip, how the focus for some is turning to compensation. Over the last six months and longer, more and more people have reached out to us, people who have lost loved ones. Silver success, Laura Muir sets a new British record in Tokyo to become the first Scot in 33 years to win an Olympic track medal. And jackpot joy for the supermarket worker and his district nurse wife, who always thought they'd win big one day. I'm Andrea Brimer, this is the STV News at 6, live from Aberdeen. Good evening. It's the most significant increase to the price in household fuel bills for a decade. Today, the energy watchdog Ofgem confirmed the cost for gas and electricity will rise yearly by around £139 per household. Ofgem say the increase is due to the wholesale price of fuel. But campaigners argue the move will leave thousands with the choice heat or eat. Here's Brandon Cook. Life is going to get a bit tougher for thousands of households across Scotland. Switching on the lights, firing up the hob and turning up the heating. Trivial things that many take for granted but are bank-breaking decisions for others. Today's announcement is a sharp price increase for those on standard meters, even more for prepaid. The wholesale cost of fuel is up by 50% in recent months. The regulator off Gem says they have no choice. The announcement we're making today is made because we've seen record fossil fuel prices, not just in electricity and gas, but also in petrol and diesel. And what the price cap does is it says to customers, you do need to pay a fair price, but no more than that. The cap on energy costs was first introduced two years ago to protect people from sudden price hikes. It's reviewed every six months and adjusted to suit a range of different factors, including the value of wholesale fuel. For the average household, the first price limit was around £1,100. That rose six months later, but the next year and a half saw consecutive price drops as the price of gas and electricity fell due to the pandemic. In April this year, prices were back up to a level even higher than the original cap. Now this, extra increases takes prices through a threshold not seen for over a decade. Five cities in Scotland are worst hit by fuel poverty in the UK. Despite being oil capital of Europe, Aberdeen is one of them. What do you actually choose? Do you choose the heat? Do you choose the clothe or feed or whatever? Because there's only so many pounds in everybody's pocket. That's very cruel and I think that's very unfair when people really need it more than ever at the moment. Nappies and baby food and that. Yeah, like, but we've got a lot so, yeah. that we could probably we, spend that on, to be fair. That's disgusting, really. Like, I don't know how they get away with it. I'm just your average Joe, you know what I mean? I make a, a minimum wage, pay so much a month and I'm literally left with buttons at the end of the month. You know, it's one thing it hits your pockets, but the stress that that causes for families... Those working on the front line say it will push thousands further into fuel poverty. It feels like a perfect storm for families, especially as we come into times where furlough comes to an end, we're moving out of a pandemic. The, their bill could go up by £139 per year. That will obviously have a huge impact for many households in Scotland. Advice bureaus are asking people to seek help if they're stuck. It's really, really important that we get the message out there that in Scotland particularly there is some good news and that there is a lot of help available um, to help households who are struggling with fuel bills and we would really urge them to contact us. This is an increase to the cap on default tariffs, so not being on one of those tariffs is probably the best thing that you can do to avoid the increase. And that, that might mean looking at different fixed tariffs that suppliers in the market are offering and thinking about making a switch. The price cap is due to begin on October the 1st. Brandon Cook, STV News. 
As restrictions ease, the question over how COVID was handled continue to be asked and the focus for some, at least, has turned to one of compensation. One major legal firm says it's handling over 150 cases, ranging from accusations of negligence in care homes to a lack of training and insufficient PPE for health workers. First Minister Nicola Sturgeon says the government plans to learn the lessons of the pandemic through a public inquiry. Ivana Holland reports. Um, my little boy's growing up and should be seeing his granny, but he's not getting to now. It's difficult. Ian Ledlaw lost his mother, Margaret, last April. As a vascular dementia sufferer, she was at high risk from coronavirus. She was moved to a care home where she caught COVID and died in the space of two weeks. Ian and his family think the care home were negligent and are now taking legal action. It's just a sense that there's more than one party who's at fault for like the ultimate outcome and we feel like um, these parties should be held accountable and admit their liability for what happened. Robert Gold says he's been left feeling angry as he feels his dad William died in a care home too soon. He's also seeking redress. I know it sounds a bit cliche but I really want justice, you know, you know for not to put too fine a point on it, the, the, the lack of strong management procedures being followed led to the direct death of my dad. So, you know, it doesn't matter whether he's 89 or 49 or 69, he, he was taken away um, wrongly simply because people didn't do their job. Decisions and policies made by the Scottish Government during the last 18 months are also in the hands of solicitors. There's going to be far more evidence coming out against the Scottish Government and of course the UK Government when that public inquiry arrives. But we do already know that certain terrible decisions were made that the Scottish Government themselves, the Cabinet Secretary for Health, has apologised for. The decision to send people out of hospitals and into care homes when they were positive for the virus. That's unforgivable and that's one of the primary bases upon which we are looking to see what legal avenues can be pursued against the Scottish Government. The First Minister says the actions of her government will be reviewed in a public inquiry. I'm not going to comment on any potential legal action. It would be completely inappropriate for me to do that. Any individual, of course, has uh, the right to consider whether uh, their rights have been in any way breached so that they think legal action might be appropriate and people will take their own legal advice. The date for a UK-wide public inquiry into the handling of coronavirus has been set by the Prime Minister for next spring. Ivana Holland, STV News. A train strike is looming after pay talks between ScotRail and unions collapsed. Negotiations about pay, working conditions and redundancies have ended acrimoniously, with industrial action now expected from early September. The ScotRail franchise is currently operated by Dutch firm Abellio. It will be nationalised in March and run by the government. Funding for projects to reduce emissions in the North Sea has been announced by the Scottish Government. £16.5 million will be provided for seven energy schemes led by the Net Zero Technology Centre. The cash will be matched by the oil and gas industries. Projects include the production of low-carbon hydrogen. There is disturbing evidence of the worsening impact of plastic pollution on seabirds across Scotland. The much-loved puffin is the most affected, with a risk to them becoming entangled or even ingesting plastic. With more, here's Ian Ramage. It's little surprise plastic debris has been found in thousands of seabirds' nests across northwest Europe, posing a serious threat to wildlife. It's most prevalent in those of puffins. The extent's been unearthed in a four-year study by the Environmental Research Institute in Thurso. Its findings could prove vital. The neat aspects about seabirds is that they can be used as a sentinel species, so an indicator of, uh, of, of the impact of different types of pollution, for example. It's been suggested that some of these species um, uh, could be used to uh, help identify uh, the, tr the long-term trends in plastics in the environment and give us a kind of heads up on how the environment is being impacted. Information was collected from 14 species in 84 colonies. Of those, 12% contain plastic, 67% of puffin nests featured plastic. A campaigner on the north coast, familiar with the problem, has collected more than a tonne of plastic each year from one beach alone, Balnaquil, in Sutherland. 
this plastic has been there for a long time. So it's people are changing their ways now, but we're still there's still a lot in the ocean. So what we're picking up could be from, you know, could be from now, could be from five years ago, could be from 10 years ago. And um, the thing that's really daunting is that it, it just doesn't stop. So we've been doing it for five years and we haven't seen like a reduction. Similar voluntary cleanups go on around our coast throughout the year. The academic team behind the latest research says substantial interventions are needed to tackle the issue or will lose entire seabird species. Ian Ramage, STV News. An independent review on how fish farms are regulated is underway. It'll look at what improvements can be made to the environmental, economic and community aspects of aquaculture. Environmental groups have criticised work practices. The sector is worth over £800 million to the Scottish economy. Now, many high streets across Scotland are struggling under the challenges of the pandemic and more people shopping online. But a community group in Orkney have come up with a novel way to bring people back into Kirkwall by installing an urban beach. Anne Smith has more. Who needs the Costa del Sol when you have the Costa del Kirkwall? This urban beach has been set up with two things in mind. It's very important. We have got a brilliant high street and we need to keep supporting the local businesses, trying to get younger generations to understand the importance of shopping in the local economy so that we can um, support businesses going forward and keep this fantastic town centre that we have. We've had lots of things cancelled for everybody and nothing really to look forward to. And we felt this was a, something that's never been done in Orkney before, something different, something fun, and it's outdoor so we can get everybody back together and bring people into the town and say it's safe to come back to Kirkwall and come and see what's in town. Life's a beach for these youngsters enjoying the sand and organisers hope the project will help show the next generation what the high street has to offer. It's important to get folk confident again about coming out in the street. Uh, you can look around and everything's been arranged very safely. But in the longer term it's particularly good to get all these youngsters onto the streets. Kids 2, 3, 5, 15. Because a town centre, it's not just about shopping, you know, it's about having a good time, it's about seeing your friends, meeting up with family, and I think this is a fantastic example about why town centres are superior to online shopping. And for many young beachgoers, it's a great opportunity to make new friends and try new things. It's socialising, having the kids be next to each other and actually playing with each other actually socialising before they go into nursery, for example, for Kira, because she's had nobody to speak to or play with. I play. So it's been great. It's so fun, and because I've never had a beach on the street before. And there's still time to soak up the sun on Kirkwall's urban beach. The event continues over the weekend. Anne Smith, STV News. Lovely idea. Now, comedian Janie Godley says she's gobsmacked and delighted to be cast in this year's pantomime in Aberdeen. The entertainer will play Mrs Potty in Beauty and the Beast at His Majesty's Theatre, which was postponed from last year due to Covid. Janie is starring in her first ever panto alongside Aberdonian Call the Midwife star Laura Main. Christmas means panto, so they're so intrinsically linked that people come to the city, they have their dinner, they go see the lights, they go see a panto, and it's so much part of that festive season that I think that's what makes it so special. Christmas isn't Christmas unless you've saw a woman with a big dress having a shout at the wings. Now... Aberdeen is the star of a new music video which hopes to encourage more people to visit the city. Within Hindsight is the latest single from Aberdeenshire musician Colin Klein. The reflective song is a story of remembrance and loss and showcases some of the Granite City's most iconic sites. Hayley Bomber has more. Within Hindsight Within Hindsight is a reflective melody. Released earlier this summer by local folk singer Colin Klein, it invites the listener to a time of reflection. The song itself is, you know, a tale of loss, sort of regret, hindsight, uh, and it could be, you know, it could, be, it could be from love, it could be from yourself, it could, you know, trying to find yourself, it could, it could be from death or anything like that. One of the things I found, I mean, I spent many years working at sea, and uh, I spent a lot of time on my own and I had a lot of time to write, a lot of time to reflect on things that you don't normally get time to do, you know, everyday life, working, children, family, etc, etc. 
and I think everybody experienced a little bit of that during lockdown um, and they allowed to reflect and maybe they took stock of themselves. Although Colin has spent most of his musical career in California, the Northeast still holds a very special place in his heart, having grown up in Stonehaven. His music video shows familiar sights of the Granite City, including Tory Battery and Queen's Road. I wanted to show Aberdeen in a, in a very beautiful light. You know, it's, it has been shot many times. It's always shot kind of stark and, uh, and rugged, which it is, of course, but, but it also has a lot of beauty there. Inspired by what he saw during the pandemic, the song also highlights the ways people remember their loved ones. During lockdown, when I came back out and about again, you could see that all these benches were ablaze with flowers and, and, and messages. People, I think people had really, had really realised what they missed and what they lost. And I, I think people were connecting with themselves more so, connecting with family. Colin hopes the song will encourage more people to see the beauty of the Granite City and will release another single later this year. Hayley Bomber, STV News. And Hayley's report takes us to sport. There's some big wins to report on tonight. Here's Chris. Get your fill of the action. STV Sport, sponsored by Papa John's. A very good evening. Laura Muir has ended her wait for a major global outdoor medal after claiming a fantastic silver in the 1500 metres at the Olympics in Tokyo. The Dundee Hawkill Harrier set a new British record in Tokyo and she became the first Scot in 33 years to win a medal on the track. Here's Stephanie Daly. And here comes Laura Muir, chasing her home. She's got past Sifan Hassan. Laura Muir had the young athletes at her club back home, Dundee Hockhill Harriers, on the edge of their seats as they cheered home one of their own. But Laura Muir gets the silver for Great Britain. Hassan gets the bronze. It's clear what an Olympic silver medal means to Muir and her time of 3 minutes 54.5 seconds is a new British record. Oh, wow, it's just great. Just, she just came second and beat Hassan, and she's like a champion, basically. And oh, I'm just so proud of her, and she's such a big inspiration because, like, you know, she could have been one of us sitting here watching somebody else in the Olympics, and, you know, any one of us could be there, you know, in a number of years' time. She was once in my club wearing one of these vests, and I could maybe be like her one day. She's a massive inspiration here. She's left her mark in the small club of Dundee, and it's just, it's just really inspirational how she can just go out there on the world stage and show what she's capable of. It inspires me to at least keep going, um, otherwise I wouldn't have got to where I am with my running. I get it's amazing seeing that someone can go from like people like us and then do such an amazing thing like getting a silver medal at Olympics and it's just a big inspiration knowing that that could be me one day. It's yet to start somewhere so I want to, make, I want to get as far as she did. And I can't wait when I'm older to get to the Olympics and see maybe I could win a silver medal. Maybe gold. Maybe. So what's the secret of the Dundee club that has also produced Liz and Eilish McColgan? It's that big family club, you know, it's a small small town, small area, but it's got a big name. And what the girls will achieve this weekend is going to just inspire future generations to keep on doing that. Well, these athletes don't have to look any further than their own club for inspiration. And they'll be cheering on another one of their own when Eilish McColgan takes to the 10,000 metres in Tokyo tomorrow. Stephanie Daly, STV News. Absolutely fantastic. Well, there was more medal success with the Scots today. Katie Archibald and teammate Laura Kenny dominated in the women's Madison to claim gold. Jack Carlin secured bronze in the individual sprint, while Sarah Robertson helped Team GB to a 4-3 win over India in the hockey to win bronze. Now, St Johnston pulled off one of the biggest European results in their history last night, claiming a one-all draw against Turkish giant Galatasaray in the heat of Istanbul. Aberdeen threw away a two-goal lead in Iceland, but came through 3-2 and head into next week's return leg, confident of progressing, and it could be in front of a capacity crowd. With the temperature still high in the 30s, St Johnston were nearly caught cold at the start of their Europa League clash with Galatasaray. A combination of luck and bad finishing keeping the scores level. 
the Turkish giants would soon rue those misses. He jumped up back, there's got to be a penalty, and he's got to be off the park. Wow, what a moment. Skipper Jason Kerr had nerves of steel. Who's ringing all around the Fatih Tareem Stadium as Jason Kerr awaits the referee's signal. This could be a defining moment in the tie. He's had a big wait, but he steps up and Brilliant. scores! Jason Kerr silences the home crowd. Galatasaray levelled just minutes later, but Saints saw out a famous result. A performance that had manager Callum Davidson over the moon. Well, I said earlier, that's probably down as probably one of St Johnson's greatest results in Europe. You know, my first time in Europe, my first game in the European competition uh, to hold Galatasaray uh, in Istanbul. It's a one-all draw. Uh, he said that to me. 18 months ago, they said no chance. So, no, I'm very, very proud of everybody involved. 3,000 miles away in Iceland, Aberdeen were taking all of their chances against Breda Blick. In the opening goal for Aberdeen, two and a half minutes in, the perfect start. Lewis Ferguson then rose highest to make it 2 0. Easy street, not this time. Two defensive lapses were punished and the teams went inside half-time level at two apiece. A bold tactical switch saw Aberdeen make three half-time changes and it paid dividends when the impressive Christian Ramirez struck a second goal on the night, his fourth in his first four games for Aberdeen, to clinch victory and an important advantage for the return at Petaudry next week. We knew it was going to be a difficult tie. Uh, we were under no illusions about that, but... I feel like the start of the game was particularly good uh, and also the response second half. So a pleasing night, you come away with a win and it sets us up for a big game at Petrodi next week, which which was the aim going into the way leg. Elsewhere, Celtic won 4-2 against Czech side Labonets, while Hibs drew one all at home to Croatian team Rijeka. It's a big, big weekend in the Cinch Premiership. Dundee United hosts Rangers in one of the two matches tomorrow lunchtime. St Mirren take on Hearts in the other, while on Sunday it's Celtic Dundee. Hibs v Ross County. Aberdeen head to the Tony Macaroni for Livingston. And Eurostar St Johnson face Motherwell in Perth. Well, now to rugby and ahead of the final British and Irish Lions test. Attack coach Gregor Townsend says the squad would pull off one of the biggest achievements in rugby if they can head home tour winners. The series is finally poised at one all with world champion South Africa ahead the match in Cape Town tomorrow with Ali Price and Duhan van der Merwe, the only Scots in the starting 15. it would be a huge achievement. I think it's we're obviously just looking at 80 minutes tomorrow. But when you put it in context of the, the last eight weeks and the challenges we've gone through and, and, and South Africa, but, but obviously we, we're a long way from our families for a huge period of time, uh, it would be a massive achievement. Yeah, fantastic weekend of sport available for everyone. And we'll have the very best of it here back on Monday. Do you join us then if you can. Get your fill of the action. STV Sport, sponsored by Papa John's. Well, we have heard the warnings that it is set to be pretty wet this weekend. Here's the proof. Here's Sean with the full weather forecast. Well, I expect there's quite a few people out there that got a good old soaking today. Some heavy thundery downpours, and I'm afraid this weekend is all about heavy showers. There's low pressure centre right over the top of us, and that means we could get showers that could bring some spots as much as about a third of a month's worth of rain in just a few hours. Let's have a look at if those showers are heading your way. Skies and sunshine are in the forecast. TUI sponsors STV Weather. So we'll still see some heavy showers as we head into the weekend. Of course, today we've had some torrential downpours at times. And that will still be the case on and off through Saturday and Sunday. Particularly so the west tomorrow, then the northeast on Sunday. We'll take a closer look in a wee second. But today we've had that heavy and at times thundery rain drifting away to the north. The intensity of that rain though should ease as we head through the evening. Now let's have a look at the rainfall accumulations. This is Saturday first of all. The bigger the dots on the map, the more rainfall you're at risk of seeing. So you can see tomorrow the bulk of those showers will be across the West Highlands, the Inner Hebrides and also the likes of 
Barra, South Use, North Use and also Benbecula. And then we see the focus of the heavier showers and the risk of some flooding close to that centre of low which drifts into the North Sea on Sunday. Cross lights Murray and Aberdeen, so that's where I expect the heaviest of those showers will be by the time we get to Sunday. So tomorrow for most of us we start off with some showers across the north and the northeast. The North Highlands are in Murray, Aberdeenshire here we should become largely dry with sunshine. So the risk of a few showers across the Northern Isles, but largely dry with sunshine here. But then you see those heavy showers developing in central and western parts. But like today, you might dodge all those showers and it will feel nice and sunshine with highs into the low 20s. Then we see, as I mentioned, the focus of those heavier showers drifting east on Sunday. Lovely sunshine in the far west. TUI sponsors STV Weather. Finally tonight, a couple who always had a feeling they might win big one day say they're absolutely overjoyed after scooping more than £5 million on the lottery. Paul Drake from Bathgate checked his numbers last Thursday on the way to a shift at a little warehouse. His wife Louise, who's a district nurse and worked throughout the pandemic, is already planning a big holiday once restrictions allow. Quite right too. Here's Vanessa Kennedy. She went to meet them. Paul has been buying lottery tickets since he was 16, usually choosing the same combination of numbers. But it was last week when he was running late for work that he bought three lucky dips. As he left for his shift at a supermarket warehouse last Thursday morning, he had a niggling feeling he should check his tickets. I turned off my phone, my, my phone round, it was like, oof, and I just, that was very emotional at the time, yes. So I, just, I ran back in the house and um, I showed uh, Louise the ticket and she thought it was £5,100, she was slightly wrong. I must have scanned it, oh, God on many times, hundreds of times. The ticket's never left my side since last Thursday morning. It's went everywhere with me. Louise has worked as a district nurse throughout the pandemic. She says while the money will make a huge difference, it won't stop her working. It's been very, very hard and our work isn't something that can be postponed. You know, we deal with people in their own homes who need to often daily visits, people who are palliative, end of life care. So you have no option but just get on all your PPE and go and do it. So yeah, it has had an effect but I definitely won't stop working and I'll still work. And while the couple are still in shock about their massive win, Paul says he'd always hoped this would be a reality. It sounds really strange, but I always thought I'd win the lottery. I don't know why. I had that feeling. And I said that to me. I've that. always said, I think you're going you're gonna to win this one day. But when it happens, it's a shock. But it's just, it opens a lot of doors. It's just, it's fantastic. The couple are planning on upgrading their car and going travelling when they can. But they're vowing to remain down to earth. And while Paul has quit his job, both say they won't let the bubbles go to their heads. Yay! Vanessa Kennedy, STV News. Just goes to show that lucky dips do work then after all. I must go and get myself a ticket. Um, it's going to be a great weekend for them. Hopefully, whatever you're up to, it is too. We're all back on Monday. From the team here, a very good night to you.